Hey everybody, today Rado runs down fairy trails, but before I get going, please turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel so that when I make rules goofs, you'll know what they are. And if you've done that, then welcome to our fairy trails, everybody. This is the beginning of a forest full of trails that my yellow gnomes and Jen's purple elves will travel while trying to make homes for themselves. This is the starting card that is always placed out in the beginning of the game. And at the beginning of the game, each player gets two cards randomly from the draw pile, and we are ready to go. And what are we trying to do? We are in a race. The first player to build all 19 of their houses wins the game. And we build houses by completing trails that are in our color. And as you can see, there are yellow and uh, purple trails going off in all four directions from this starter. And this is a little yellow gnome house and a purple elf house. So you could really kind of think of this one over here being Jen's starting direction and this one being mine. Although we could play any card anywhere we want in any direction. Um, but what we're trying to do is close off trails, which will make sense as we get going. So how do I do? Well, I've got two cards. You always have two cards to choose from. I'm going to play one of these two cards adjacent to any existing cards. Then I'll draw a replacement, and my turn is over. It's that easy. And let's actually take a closer look at these cards, because they are absolutely lovely looking, and you know they're often full of nice little touches, like that cute little fox there and whatnot. But more importantly, you can see this one is interesting to me, because it's got another one of my houses on it. So I probably want to play this one. And if I go, say, like this... What has happened? Now, this yellow trail has two of my houses on it, and it can continue to extend off in this direction. Now, this purple elven trail right here, it is now closed. It's just been cut off. It will never be expanded. And if there was a house on this closed purple trail, that house would get built by putting a little token on it. But as it is, uh, that trail got closed, doesn't really affect anything. And my turn is over, I draw another card, and oh, I've got a card with one of Jen's houses on it, and I am done. It is now Jen's turn. And coincidentally, she got one that's gonna be good for her. So what the heck, let's just go on ahead. Well, now this is interesting. So Jen can go on ahead and do this, and like me, she has now extended this trail. It has two houses, and when it gets closed off, those houses will get built, and Jen will get two steps closer to winning the game. But this trail is branching off in two different directions. So this one is going to be inherently tougher for Jen to close off. Me, as soon as I get you know, a card like, say, I mean, heck, I could close this off right now on my next turn by just uh, closing off there. Jen's got to close two directions off with that one. But, you know, it'll be worth it, and this might be something she tries to close off quick, or she might build it up to be a huge network with dozens of houses that she'll get all built at once. So anyway, that was her turn. She draws another card. It is my turn again. And... Right, now, sooner or later, I'm going to have to build this house. And I'm not crazy about that, because that's only helping Jen. But in the meantime, I don't think I necessarily want to do it. So I've got to ask myself, if I'm going to play this card... Although, you know, I don't... I mean, what I don't want to do, certainly, is, say, place this over here. Because, hey, while I'm making a nice, long, yellow route that I could start to take advantage of, in the meantime, I've made Jen's route more valuable by putting something on hers, so I'm not going to do that. But if I put this over here like this as an example. I'm just making this line longer. It's not any more valuable, but I could still potentially get some more houses on it before I close it. And now I've got, Jen's got two different roads that she wants to split her attention between. This one up here and this one over there. Uh, um, you know, these two purple ones that go off in this direction aren't particularly interesting because there's no houses. Now I don't have to play this. I could close this right now and just be done. Boom. And say, hey, just like that. I have built two of my 19 houses. I'm winning. I'm in the lead. Woohoo! Let's just say I go like that, and then I draw another card, and it's got another house, which now I regret because I could have put this house, and then I could have closed it on the next turn, and I would have built three houses instead of two. But it's early days. I'm sure I'll find another way to get this house built. All right. Then it is Jen's turn. And Jen um, is going to try and make this road she started on a bit more attractive. She'll go like that, let's say. And now, this road, it comes off, it's still going in this direction. You can see there's an under, uh, you know, uh, there's a valley. So this purple road and this purple road are considered different roads. But, so Jen has made that, and she's still got two in, she's got to close this off. But when she does, she'll have three. And, and you know, she can close off one end anytime she wants with this one, but then she'll have to close off the other end. She draws another card, and it is my turn. And... 
Right. Well, I've closed off my one road. I need to start worrying about another one. And how would I do that? Well, I'm not particularly excited about giving this one to Jen still. So I'd like this to go someplace. How about... You know, hey, this is a quick and easy thing. I could just put this here like this. And it would instantly be closed because it starts there, goes along, gets to this house, and closes over there. And I, I mean, I could just instantly, boom, get it done. Uh, and you know, that's definitely a way you could play this game. Just going for quick, easy closes, or you could try to build a big, long, elaborate, crazy thing. What the heck? I'll just go for the quick and easy build. Boom, I'm done. And then I draw another one. All right, and some more. Ah, I'm gonna have to give Jenna a house next turn, whether I like it or not. <clears throat> okay, her turn. Let's see. And she's eventually gonna have to help me with a house. So how is she going to do this? I mean, if she puts this here like this, let's say, then this road, it's got another house on it, and it's just continuing in this direction. And she's got this one, and maybe she'll wrap around like that eventually. And she's given me a yellow. But, I mean, this road is getting more and more valuable. And still, she's got one, and eventually she'll be able to close off the other end. Let's just go like that. And she draws, and it's my turn. And like, oh, well, I guess this is a new road for me I care about. How about, well, I could go like this. And now I've closed off one end of this, and I just need another closer. But my other card doesn't have a closer. But let's go with this anyway. So now I'm planning on going over like that. And, oh, now I've got a closer, so I can just get another quick close if I want. And let's see, Jen. Um, another one of my houses, which she does not want to do. Although here's an interesting trick. If Jen wanted to, Jen could go like this. And you'd say, well, why would she do that? She's helping me. Now there's another house on my line, but... My line just got tougher to close. I, you know, I mean, and sooner or later, if Jen puts this card, she's going to be helping me at some point. But Jen is actually making my life a little bit more difficult because now I've got two roads I have to close, whereas before I could close this off immediately. Although if Jen does that, then she's not taking advantage of the other use of this, which is say to go like that. Because if Jen goes like that, she's just closed off one end of this big network she's making. Although, again, she's still putting this here. And this guy is on a road that kind of comes over there like that. And uh, see, so Jen doesn't like that. So, But if Jen goes, say, like this, then she's closed off this end. She's given me this. But now I've got to expand it in two directions. Maybe I can wrap these around to go like that. Maybe that'll work out for me. We'll see how it goes. Jen draws another card. And it's my turn. And... So now I've got these two houses I want to worry about, both thanks to Jen. And unfortunately, I do not have, I mean, I could, I could just close this off so it's done and put a house for Jen way off here out in the middle of nowhere that has one, two, three, four. So that definitely is not doing Jen any favors. Trying to score this means she would have to close a lot of directions. But at the same time, I've closed this and now I can go off in this direction and coming over here, this is already closed. So I, I'll go with that. Let me draw another one. And it is Jen's turn. So now she's been building up for a while. She could go on ahead and close that super highway she's been making so far and then build one, two, three, four. And she will actually pull into the lead because I've only built three. Interesting. Or does she want to push it a little bit because if she goes like this, hey, there's another house on the road, but now she's got two paths to close. And you know, maybe I'll end up putting a thing that's another four-way, and then suddenly this road could be very... So Jen could push it harder and get to a bigger thing, but I think, no, nope, she's going to close this thing while, she, while the closing is good. So, boom. Or she'll go like this, let's say. Thereby, if she's making a yellow, this... Uh, she, I mean, because if she goes like this... She's giving me a nice closed line that I could build off of. If she goes like this, she's giving me a longer one that I would have to work in two directions to actually close. But in the meantime, Jen just built one, two, three, four. And Jen is in the lead, just like that. All right. And it is my turn. Okay, and I've got these two different... Um, you know, and I, this one I could just close right now. And I would score one, and we'd be all tied up again. But I'm, I'm, you know, but if I go like this, let's say, I'm potentially setting myself up to connect both of these into one, and I'm also creating a new line for Jen, and that's kind of dangerous because Jen might leverage that and make this go off and make these not connect. But what the heck? I'll take a chance. I'll do that because there's no getting around it. I have to put out a house now or one of Jen's houses. At least I'll do this one that helps me and potentially lets me connect all three of these houses. That's pretty cool. All right, and it's Jen's turn. 
And Jen says, oh, hey, a new house for me. But she's also got this house over here and this house over here. So Jen's got a lot of options about what she wants to start building up next. Hmm. Da 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 dee da da dee da da So if she goes like this, let's say. Well, here's the problem. If she goes like this, she closes off my road for me, which means on my turn, I, you know, Jen will help me build two houses. Jen does not want to do that. Um, if she went like this, well, that, I mean, no, that's helping me no matter what, because it's connecting all these things together. Plus, she doesn't want to play that. She doesn't want to put it right in place where I'm going to score it. So let's look at her other one. Oh, this is interesting. If Jen goes like this, for example, then, boom, Jen has instantly closed this, and she hasn't, I mean, she has now made this a better road for me. One, two, three, four, but I've got two directions it's splitting out in, so I've got to work harder to close that off. So if Jen had to put something down that had my houses on it, this was a good time to do it because um, it makes it tougher for me. So that's that. And then it is my turn. So now I've got this nice network. I need to close that and that off. I don't have any closures on this one, but I could start working to close this one off. For instance, if I go like this, and the nice thing is doing this, oh, I'm giving Jen another option, but she'd have to work on it. I mean, I could go, I could just go like this, and it closes this road that has nothing, and it closes that end. Um, but, oh my gosh, no, if I do this, then this purple line, Jen would instantly score that house. So I'm certainly not going to do that. And of course, as you might imagine, as the game goes on and our network gets bigger and bigger and bigger, uh, you know, the potential for overlap between players just becomes a bigger element of the game. Alrighty. So I did that. And it is Jen's turn. And she's got to start working on some more houses. So she's got that one. She could play with this one, or she could play with this one I just created. But this is these two have two, or this one has three lines, four lines. This one has all the lines. That is a tough road to try and deal with. So I think Jen likes this because it's closed off in this direction. So let's just have her going ahead and branch out. So that, now this has two, and she goes in this direction. She goes off in that direction. Although she's giving me a house, but it's a house that um, is not going to be a quick score for me either. All right. And then it is my turn. And um, and here's my problem. This is what you will often run into. I have no way to close this thing now. All i got to do is just close this off, and I'll get one, two, three, four houses, and I've got no... Oh, wait, oh I do. I do have a closer. i got to look a bit more closely. I will do that. Boom. And that was a big payday. On this road that comes all the way down here, there's that house and that house, and that house. Oh, this is a big one. And that house, and that house. Booyah! Oh my, I am halfway through. That was a big payday. Although I did just create another house for Jen, but it's uh, again on one that goes in one, two, three directions, so that doesn't really help her very much. Basically, I think she's down here working on this stuff. Um, right. And if Jen had been a little bit quicker, she could have actually put a branch here so it would have been tougher for me to score that thing. But she didn't. So what is she going to do now? Either way, she has to play a thing that's going to help me. So she does not want to put either of these cards in a place that, you know, like, well, let's see, what could she do? She could go like a deece. No, because then there's an instant quick closer for me. She doesn't want to give me that. She could go uh, like a deece. And then I would she I would instantly score that. She doesn't want to give me either of those. She is not happy about this situation. Um, yeah, so maybe if she goes like this, then this is a nice road for me, but it's got one, two, three on it. So she'll go like that. It's not really helping her, but hey, you know, sometimes you don't have the cards you want. Okay. And it is my turn. And now I've got these two houses. I want to start shutting them down. And I could, for example, go like this. And so now this path is shut down, and I just need to close off one more end. Oh, that looks good for me. Although I have now made an interesting road for Jen. This road now has three ends to get to those two houses. And so on. Folks, I think that should give you a pretty good idea of the particulars of how Fairy Trails works. And now, if you'd like to hear some final thoughts, well, let me tell you, this is great. Jen and I really enjoy this. And I got to admit, I'm a little surprised that we do. I mean, and you know, 
I, that shouldn't necessarily be the case. It's from designer Uwe Rosenberg, who has long been one of our favorite designers of all time. I absolutely love Uwe's work. Um, you know, Agricola and Lo, Lo Yang, and there's so many wonderful games. But, you know, over the last few years, Jen and I have found that uh, Uwe's kind of approach to design has become a little bit more laissez-faire, a little bit more relaxed and laid back. I mean, when I got into Uwe games, you know, with Agricola, those were games that were harsh and punishing. And if you didn't play to your best, the game would just chew you up and spit you out. But over the ensuing years, I have found his other big, heavy euro style games have just become a little bit more casual because you're not always quite so starved for resources. It's easier to achieve what you want to do. You can get to your goals more readily. Uh, you don't uh, get thrown so many confounding variables. And we found we've been enjoying his games less and less. Not that they weren't good, just not for us anymore. And then uh, along comes Fairy Trails, which is super chillax, super laid back. Um, and the interesting thing is, I have often talked about this before, that Jen and I are not looking to relax when we play board games. We like tension-filled, angst-ridden, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? This is so hard. It all comes down to this type of decision experiences. And if a game is just laid back and, oh, we're just having a great time, man, it just it, it doesn't really resonate with them. You're like, oh, that was nice, but let's move on because it didn't really give us that fix we're looking for. Everything I just said is true about Fairy Trails. This is such a laid-back, charming little trifle of a game. But I don't say that in any kind of derogatory way because it is very sharp, it is very fluid, it is very fast. What does the box say? I think, um, yeah, 20 minutes. And I would agree. It's definitely under a 20-minute game. And, oh, it is just so delightful. It's incredibly charming. The the forest that we're building up looks really nice. And, you know, uh, the, the central element that goes into your decision making in this game is where am I going to place this so I can benefit myself the most and benefit you the least, um, or in some case actively detract from you. Uh, you know, if I if you've got a really great thing that's going to score you a lot, or I might want to slow you down on that a little bit because I've got a card that I didn't particularly wasn't going to help me anyway, but I can use it to slow you down. So there's a little bit of very very passive, very indirect uh, interaction between players, but for the most part, this is just oh well, uh, you know, I almost feel like I'm doing a Bob Ross painting. Well, I'll just put a little bush over there, and we'll just put a nice little house over there. It just, it just feels so, again, charming, and um, but still very, very satisfying. You can just play for speed uh, and just try to get your things built as fast as you can, or you can build up for big, super monster pieces. But there will come a point in the game, invariably, and I guess maybe this is why it works for us. Because even though, while well, for the most part, it's just like, oh, I'm just slowly working towards my ultimate goal. Everything's going fine. But every once in a while, oh. Why do I have these cards? These are not good cards. I do not want to play these cards. I need to play this. Because as it goes along, and we have fewer and fewer and fewer and fewer houses, I just need to build this one more house and I can win the game. The tension does come back. And that chill, laid back, relaxed, oh, whatever, we're all just a bunch of happy gnomes and elves, that goes away. And you're like, oh, oh, Jen, yeah, Jen can't finish the thing she needs to build her to? Then we are constantly just creating branches and routes to prevent each other from getting to that last little bit as we just try to claw or to get that final build. And Jen and I have found every time we play, it came down to, you know, just within a few houses of each other who wins. So, while the lion's share, and certainly what I showed you in this run-through, because I only showed you, you know, the first um, third of the game, it's really just live and let live. Everybody's making lovely, adorable little villages and building nice houses and aren't all the gnomes and elves happy. But this game definitely does have a ramp. And near the end of the game, you're like, oh, these are the wrong cards. Okay, I get, this won't help me, but I won't, won't close it now, but I could play this and it'll leave me open and it'll create a split for you. And if I get the type I need, and did I... Oh, one more round. Um, you know, there there are a lot of interesting elements that do blossom and really surprise. Overall, Fairy Trails, like I said right from the ground, was a real surprise for me and Jen. The most pleasant of surprises, and we absolutely adore it. And that's Fairy Trails, folks. The latest from Uwe Rosenberg. Thanks very much for watching. Have a very nice day. Talk to you later. So long. Uh, bye bye.